Hello, and welcome to our webinar for today, entitled Office 365 Unleashed, How to Make Collaboration Work for You. This presentation is being made in conjunction with the South Bay Chambers of Commerce and the Microsoft Community Connections Program. My name is Brian Inuma. My company is Strategic Systems Group. We're a Los Angeles-based IT consulting firm and experts in enterprise resource planning. I have with me today as co-presenters, Mr. Eric Klaus and Mr. Eddie Bader. Eric, go ahead first. Hi, my name is Eric Klaus. My firm is Partner Source Solutions. We provide sales and marketing uh, advisory services to primarily small and medium-sized businesses and focus extensively on sales and marketing process, uh, very much focused around customer relationship management and related technologies. And I'm Eddie Bader with Companyville, and we provide uh, technology ser solutions for businesses. We specialize in uh, business continuity, security, and infrastructure. Great. Well, thank you. So business collaboration tools, how to leverage technology to grow your business. We're going to primarily focus on Office 365, and we'll kind of touch on some other technologies as well as we go along. So, Eddie, go ahead. So, what we're talking here is about how things are changing in the in the marketplace. Uh, the traditional office, where you come in eight to five, you work at a desk with computers that have been provided for you by the company you work for. That's all changing, and the environment that we have right now is more of a mobile workforce, more of a BYOD, which is a bring your own device type environment where a lot of employers aren't supplying uh, computers for their their associates anymore. And people are working on the devices that they feel most comfortable with, whether that's Windows platform, Android, or Mac OS, for example. You'll see that, according to some of the statistics that we have here, 71% of small and medium-sized businesses believe that uh, mobile apps will entirely replace their traditional solutions, and that uh, instant collaboration apps uh, by 2018 will be at an all-time high, about 3.5 million. Uh, the idea here is uh, making your making your workforce uh, more mobile, more interactive, and all without having to be in the same location, which saves on expenses for travel, and it sa saves on expenses for actually having to have office space. Okay. So we talked about both. Go ahead, Brandon. <laughs> I was just, I guess, try, trying to uh, kind of pre-frame the, the presentation. We'll end up going through the, the things that are in Office 365. And it's a suite of tools. Uh, some of them can be used at a local level, local system. Others are cloud-based. Go ahead, Andy. Sure. And I think if you press the button one more time, you'll get a few more things here. Ah, very good. So when we talk about worry less. Uh, a lot of people are worried about going to a cloud platform because of security and uh, access to sensitive information. I think now more than ever, uh, the cloud is a lot safer than it used to be. You do have to take some precautions, and there are a lot of tools that are built in that can be added on to Office 365 to make your environment more secure. Uh, working easier, uh, what's nice about this is that through the cloud environment, Regardless of what platform you work on or what device you work on, whether it be a phone, a tablet, or a traditional desktop computer, your experience is going to be similar, if not identical, to what you would what you would use uh, across platforms. So whenever you switch devices, uh, you can you can rest assured that your experience will be seamless. And when we talk about working together, we're talking about collaboration. Uh, again, as I had mentioned earlier, the ability to work with one another, to edit documents, to share files, all without having to do it the traditional way. If you've ever been in a typical office environment, you might have a document that you're working on. You do some edits to it, and then somebody asks you for that file. And typically, the first thing we do is we uh, get to our email, we attach that file, and we send it off. 
now take that through a couple of iterations and now you have maybe seven or eight versions of the same file. Nobody, maybe one person has that latest version. Everybody has some version of that. With the collaboration tools that are in place uh, and that are available to you now, like OneDrive for Business, you can actually have one version of that that everybody has access to. So whenever they make updates, it's always updating the same file and everybody knows where it is so that you're not um, wasting time and resources sending files. You don't One, you don't have to ask somebody for it because you know where it is. And two, you never have to worry about having the latest version because the version that's accessible to everybody is the latest version. So uh, those are the types of things that we're talking about when we talk about Office 365, uh, modern business, and collaboration. Okay, great. What do we have here? So when we talk about protecting what you value most, I, again, there's a, a there's still a fear about how secure using a cloud environment is. Uh, one of the things, one of the benefits to using Office 365 is that it's a solid platform. The uh, data centers are co-located, which means that your data doesn't reside in a single location. It resides in several locations, which are owned, operated, and maintained by Microsoft. Um, their engineers are doing the patches on the servers. They are watching for intrusions. They are also maintaining the security, whether it be uh, virtual or actual physical security. They have that going 24-7, and that's uh, part of the service that you're paying for. In addition, there are uh, packages like EMS, which is Enterprise Mobility and Security, that add uh, additional levels of security um, to your environment, and we'll talk about those as we go along. Okay. Eric, do you want to take this one? Sure. I mean, what we're really looking at here is just that concept of collaboration and mobility. Uh, the ability to have access to all of your files, all of your information, all of your contacts uh, in that mobile arena where I'm working from a laptop today, I might be working off of a tablet sitting in a coffee shop tomorrow or on my mobile phone, uh, my smartphone, uh, somewhere else later in the day and I still need to have access to all of the information that is across all of those devices. Go ahead, Eric. Sure. This is a continuation of that, again, talking about the, the function of collaboratively working. So now we're talking about not just the fact that I might be sitting in that coffee shop or sitting uh, somewhere else, but still being able to collaborate and work with my, my team members. Most of us in, in business today are working across a, a team, whether that's uh, a direct team of people that I have or across uh, a service and sales team, a sales and marketing team. Uh, at the end of the day, very few of us operate in a, in a vacuum, uh, operating completely by ourselves. And so we have the need today to interact and work collaboratively with other people. If you are working on a proposal for a prospective client, I have the need to engage with potentially my services team or my marketing team. I need information to put that proposal together. Uh, I might need to work with people who are outside of my organization. I might need to engage with other vendors uh, and have information available from them uh, and work collaboratively with them on this as well. So that is the, the requirement of the business world today. It's not just a function of I do everything myself. It's a function of I'm working with that wider group, that larger group of people. And I need to be able to do that in that same mobile mode that we were talking about a moment ago. Have the ability to share information, 
have that, as Eddie pointed out before, that single document source, uh, but that we can all work around that if I give people the, the rights and access to do so, so that I can have them edit and insert information. Um, I can have the ability to uh, engage collaboratively with them via tools like uh, Microsoft Skype for Business or other online tools <laughs> like GoToMeeting. At the end of the day, uh, all of those tools are part of that collaboration element and how people leverage those, how people use those, is really a, a growing area in today's business world. I have uh, some personal experience here with that uh, single document that Eddie mentioned earlier. So we had a situation where we needed to collaborate on one particular project and keep track of our steps. And if we had different versions of that document flying around via email, it would have been much more difficult to keep track of it. Also, uh, it was an Excel spreadsheet that we could collaborate uh, online at the same time. So our, our changes were being recorded basically in real time and we could see each other's work uh, as it was being developed. Perfect. Eddie, go ahead. So I'll jump in here. Yeah, and um, when we talk about Office 365, you're going to be familiar with a lot of uh, the applications that you have, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Outlook, some of the new things that you're familiar with but may not realize how integrated these tools are, are Skype for Business and OneDrive for Business. Um, with Office 365, there's a special focus on collaboration where all of these tools end up working seamlessly together. So it's not the traditional Office uh, suite that you're used to working with. Um, in a Skype integration, you can actually make phone calls from your desktop just by using the contacts in your Outlook. Uh, you can find that person, click on their name, and then initiate a call right from your desktop, which is great. And then sharing files, like we had mentioned before, using OneDrive for Business, you can actually use that as the de facto file storage for your entire company if you chose. And there are things like SharePoint, which also act as a, a file share. What's nice about that is that um, if you are working with um, clients and they need to have documents uh, that they either need to update or they need to review, you can create um, a client-facing site so that has documents that they can see. And then you can have your internal site, which has all those documents, plus all of the documents that are proprietary to your company that you wouldn't necessarily share with the client. So that's an interesting way to set up information. And uh, again, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, coming up. If I can just touch on something there, Eddie, one of the things that I, I just I want to add is one of the myths that I think a lot of people have around Microsoft's Office 365 solution is they're used to working with Word, Excel, PowerPoint. They're used to having that installed on their, their local device, whatever that might be, um, their laptop, their desktop. And there's a, a thinking out there of, well, when I move to the cloud, I have to go use the cloud-based version of those things. And I don't like that. I don't want to have to do that. Can you touch on that a little bit, Eddie? Sure, uh, and this, your options uh, vary with the, uh, depending on what subscription you take. So there are subscriptions that are only uh, online only versions of these applications, but a lot of your business premium and enterprise level uh, subscriptions will include downloadable versions of these. So you can actually have that uh, copy that rests on your hard drive on your, your physical machine like you used to, and it works exactly the same. The online versions have a little bit of a lighter touch to them, but they do get the job done. Uh, what's nice as well is that um, with one subscription, you get five licenses. So you are able to put this on up to five, five different uh, machines. You can have your desktop, laptop, tablet, phone. Uh, so that makes... Um, it really uh, allows you to, again, use, use these products seamlessly without charging you extra for those additional licenses. And again, depending on the subscription you use, you can have just online 
or you can have online and the downloadable versions, which is a, a, it's a great option. I have uh, one story to throw in for, for OneDrive, and it's something that, uh, that the three of us use. Uh, we, we have uh, a OneNote notebook that is in, in OneDrive, and all of us can get to it uh, without much difficulty. Also, in my case, I have access from, from two, two desktops, and then I also have access to that OneNote notebook uh, on my phone. So it makes it quite, quite convenient to use. Yeah, well, what's nice, too, is that even if you're on vacation and let's say you forgot your computer, if you can get to a computer that has, has access to the internet, you can still get to your files and you can still use the online version to make edits if you have to. So that's a huge convenience as well. Right. So it's that uh, cross-platform experience, whether it's a desktop computer, a notebook, tablet, or smartphone, basically the look and feel is pretty much the same uh, across those platforms. Yeah, sometimes the navigation will be a little different, but by and large, it works. Like, uh, it works the same, and it's um, pretty seamless for the most part. So maybe I'll talk a little bit about business intelligence. Uh, we, we have some experience with this with some of our clients, and it kind of starts with a, a data warehouse. And a data warehouse can be stored in any platform although Microsoft uh, SQL is a, a common one. Uh, the data can also be stored in Access for some smaller implementations, but Microsoft Excel has the ability to draw information directly from those databases and then pull them into spreadsheets and, and create pivot tables and charts with them. It uh, ends up being a pretty useful tool. Uh, part of the challenge, I think, is uh, what, what data to pull together and how to make decisions from that data. And that's where we kind of step in from time to time to help our clients do that. Yeah, I think one of the nice things about uh, Power BI is that some people are just um, inherently more visual. And if you're looking at a spreadsheet, it might take you a while to figure out what are the pertinent numbers? What is this information trying to tell me? Uh, what Power BI does is it, it lets you create a dashboard that can visually represent the data. And, and when you see charts and graphs and things like that, uh, you can set things up. You can set the information up to actually jump out at you. Like let's say we're talking about a reorder point for some inventory. And anytime it, fall, anytime it hits like 10 or below, um, that particular bar turns red. Well, when you open up a regular spreadsheet and you're looking at numbers, you kind of have to sift through data to figure out, oh, what are my items that are at that red level? When you create a dashboard, as soon as you open it up, that red just jumps out at you and it's it's talking to you and it, it's asking you to give it your immediate attention. So when you think of the data um, visually, there's a lot of things you can do that can help you. the decision makers in your company be more effective and um, be quicker to make decisions. And one thing that I would just add on that is that one of the pieces of the Power BI solutions is that it can integrate with so many out of the box, if you will, data sources. I can plug it into my QuickBooks system, I can import data and begin to leverage uh, data that might reside in spreadsheets. There's a lot that can be done for a, a very typical small business to begin to give them some data and some, as you were pointing out, Eddie, some visualization of the data that they don't get from the, the traditional uh, solutions that are in the market today. So this is a fantastic solution and a fantastic way for many small businesses to begin to have information at their fingertips uh, and visualization of that information in a way that they don't get from a lot of the tools that are uh, probably being used in their business today. Right, and a lot of people, I think Brian, you mentioned it, it's like what data to collect. I would say collect it all until you know which, until you know how to parse it out versus you know what's important, what's not important. But until you know for sure, just collect as much as you can and then see how you can use it. Uh, you'd be surprised how um, interrelated data can be that you wouldn't think actually has any connection whatsoever. 
That's great. Thank you. So when we switch to uh, Exchange Online, how about Eddie go first? Okay. Well, this is, uh, you know this to be your, your standard email box. Uh, a lot of companies post um, Exchange on-premise on the server that they have. Uh, I will tell you that although it's doable and a lot of people do it uh, for different reasons, um, I think Hosting your Exchange Online is so much more affordable. Having uh, Microsoft engineers do all the updates and patches for your system and kind of putting the onus uh, for reliability on people who know it the best, I think that's uh, a pretty good, pretty good value for the actual money that you pay for the service. I would say that if you don't have your, if you're not paying an IT person, keep, up, keep your exchange up right now, and you're doing it yourself, probably, it's probably not a good use of your time. So one of the things, that, like as a company, we would make a lot of money by helping clients keep exchange on the server in their office, but it doesn't make a lot of business sense, so we always encourage people to to go to this service, even though you know ultimately we're taking money out of our pockets, it's a it's probably one of our best practices that we recommend to all our clients, uh, just because it's uh, more reliable and more consistent. Uh, in the entire experience is more reliable and more consistent. Hey, maybe you can touch on this uh, a little bit, but kind of related to the the Exchange Online, you talked about the scenario for an organization that already has an exchange server and they've hosted it themselves on a, a server somewhere in their office. But what about the scenario that I see so commonly for small businesses where they're using a uh, another service provider, they're using a Hotmail, a Gmail, a Yahoo Mail, an AOL account. Um, what about for, for those people? How easy would it be for somebody to move from that and, and really set themselves up as, as a much more professional organization or professional looking, you know, where you've got that email address that says, you know, it's Eddie Bader at Company Build. You know, it, it reflects that you have a domain that is your business, your website, um, and that your email is tied to that. Well, Eric, that's a great point. I mean, if I were to, if we go back, um, and I don't know how easy it is, Brian, for you to go back to the front page where you show uh, our names, but if you saw um, Eddie Bader, Company Built, and then you saw my email address as eddie123 at gmail.com, I mean, think about what that says about me. Think about that. And if you have a similar type of email address, think about what that says about you, uh, even if it's... Um, or, or it doesn't have your name at all. It could just say, um, you know, uh, Jedi Knight at uh, yahoo.com. There's, there's a certain way that you want to come across uh, as a business and, and as a professional. And I think having your own domain uh, built into your email is, is really important. So if you don't have that, I would strongly recommend that you do. And it's very easy to get that set up uh, with Exchange Online. And it's very, very affordable as well. So we're talking like five or six dollars a month per user, which is really nothing when you think about it. And if you get an office subscription, then that's typically included in most of the packages. So there's that. And then um, you know, another note: uh, some people might have their website hosted through like GoDaddy or something, and GoDaddy provides uh, free email. And I've had clients that use that uh, email service before. And, you know, I, I hate to be derogatory, but that service is free for a reason. And it's free because uh, it's not very robust. And you have, at best, you have mediocre results with that. So if you want to be really professional in, our, in terms of presentation and in terms of consistency and reliability, uh, Exchange Online is a great way to go. Well, from personal experience, we have sort of run the gamut. All, all the way from the early days of a, a BBS or bulletin board service 
through uh, in-house uh, set of email servers, uh, finally to, I guess, an exchange, uh, hosted exchange, and then to Office 365. So we've, we've kind of run the gamut. And in all honesty, uh, the Office 365 solution is superior to everything else that we've used. Uh, maybe Eddie, go ahead and talk about OneDrive a little bit here. Well, we've kind of been interweaving this OneDrive discussion from the very beginning. Uh, I think uh, today is a, is a perfect example of this, this um, presentation that you're looking at is something that uh, Eric, Brian, and I have all collaborated on. But there's only one version of this out there, and it's sitting in Eric's OneDrive. So all he has to do is he emails. Basically, he goes into his um, OneDrive account, and it, it looks like uh, you're going into My Documents on your computer. He right-clicks a file that he wants to share, and he enters in the email addresses of Brian and I, and it sends out an email to us saying, hey, Eric has shared this file with you. Click on the link, and you have access to it. It's, it's so much easier. Uh, to get things across, and and this this particular uh, presentation was probably with pictures and everything, you know, 20, 25 uh, megabytes, which is a decent sized file if you're trying to send it across in an email. Uh, but we don't have to worry about that anymore because we're not sending anything; we're just getting access and uh, making it presentable for you today. So this is one of those types of tools, especially if you travel a lot or you have a sales force that you work with. Um, these are the types of tools that allow you to be completely mobile and uh, free of uh, the chains that used to kind of bind us to having to have a VPN or a connection to the server in the office. Having this kind of tool, you can go anywhere. Uh, I was in Europe this past summer, and uh, I didn't worry about what device I threw in my bag. I just took it because I knew all my files were online and I didn't have access wherever I went. I kind of, kind of mentioned this uh, OneNote note, notebook that I use to kind of track tasks uh, pending work. And that that OneNote notebook is also sitting in OneDrive that I can access from pretty much any device uh, that has a browser. Uh, primarily, I use it uh, on my workstation and on my phone. I also have some Excel spreadsheets that I, I try to keep up to date uh, as well. And it's kind of handy to be able to access that from anywhere. Eric, go ahead. Skype for Business. Sure. Skype for Business is a fantastic tool for, we touched on this a, a little bit earlier, it, it is uh, very similar to, many people are familiar with GoToMeeting, uh, and it's very, very similar to GoToMeeting in the sense of it being an online uh, collaboration tool. I can host a, a meeting there. I can reach out, and if I need to communicate with uh, Eddie or with Brian, uh, I can initiate just a, uh, a quick uh, session with them. Uh, we can have a conversation. Uh, we can just exchange in instant messages as well. Uh, so it's fantastic from that standpoint. Uh, but it can hold, uh, you can have a conversation with up to, uh, in the standard version, up to, uh, I think it's 250 people. Uh, on a, a session. I've never pushed it anywhere near that limit before, but uh, certainly for a typical small business uh, online type of meeting, I need to again collaborate with Eddie, with Brian, maybe one or two other people. It's fantastic from exactly that standpoint. And when you look at alternative tools like GoToMeeting where you're paying upwards of $20 to, to $50 um, per month for that subscription, Having something that is natively uh, bundled with your Office 365 subscription is a fantastic value. But uh, Eddie, what about SharePoint? Sure. So SharePoint, uh, like I said, it's a way to create a uh, a repository of files and information. Uh, some companies use this as their file share um, application, so they'll put all their files for sales and marketing in SharePoint. The sales and marketing people can have that. 
um, financials would be in a separate um, area and only accessible by those who should have access to it. What's really nice, and I think one of my favorite things about SharePoint is, I had mentioned this earlier, that you can create client-facing sites. So let's say we're working on a project and it's for, um, it's for Acme. The company's called Acme. So we have a project and there's some client-facing pieces. So I create two sites. I create an internal site that has all the information about the project for my team and then an external site that just has the information that the client needs to either see or update. What's really great is that, and maybe you've experienced this before too, but in a project or whenever you're doing work for somebody, oftentimes you'll have clients that want to know where you are with things, what's the latest update, um, this, that, and the other thing. Um, they're always trying to get information from you. And typically they'll call you or they'll send you emails all those things take time, even if it's only five minutes of your time. You add it up uh, for that client plus all your other clients, and it takes a good portion of your day. By having a, a client-facing site, you can actually push information out. So you don't have to wait uh, for those calls to come in. You don't have to um, find time in your day to respond to those calls. All the information that they potentially need to be pushed out to the client facing site and then it's um, consume as needed. So whenever they have questions, they just they know they have the URL, they go to the site, they look at the update. As long as you're keeping all that information updated, it's a great time saver because now instead of calling you, they just access the information uh, when they want it. And you kind of um, kind of bought yourself more time in each day by um, pushing that information out uh, in that manner. One of the things that I observe about SharePoint, it's, I kind of think of it as sort of a, a Swiss army knife. SharePoint has many, many bits of functionality in it that you can essentially add uh, and, and delete as well. Uh, so one of the things that is, is sort of interesting is, is file sharing, as you mentioned, and you can secure files such that only certain people have access to them. But it also has uh, a library of apps that you can throw in there. So a, a wiki, for example, is a, uh, an app that you can put in uh, for internal use, as you mentioned, for an intranet. And also you can create that, that wiki for external use uh, on, on the internet. There are also some things in there for task management, uh, an app that we use uh, for some, some simple task tracking. And I think that uh, uh, SharePoint is one of those things that's uh, you know, a, a well-kept secret uh, in terms of functionality. One of the things that, that you guys kind of missed that I, I particularly find separates SharePoint from OneDrive, and maybe you guys can talk a little bit about uh, OneDrive versus SharePoint, but one of the, the other major things is the fact that SharePoint has a whole workflow management system built into it so that I can uh, share a file on there, I can be notified when that file gets updated, uh, I can uh, collaborate in, in a variety of different ways uh, using SharePoint and using the, the workflow functions in there. I can, Brian, as you pointed out, tasks, I can assign tasks to other people. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with SharePoint that you you're not going to do with just a, a simple file share like a, a OneDrive. That's a good point. Uh, what, one of the things that we have used, uh, I think both OneDrive and SharePoint has a history of file file changes. So if for some reason uh, a file is, uh, I guess, mod modified in such a way where uh, it became unusable, uh, you can roll back to previous version of the, of the file and recover it fairly quickly. Okay, Eddie, what about rights management services? All right, well, with rights management services, this is, a, this is kind of a fun one because you can set up all kinds of access. Um, and let me kind of work through an example. Let's say you provide a, a rights management actually can work with your active directory so you can use the permissions set in Active Directory and kind of 
uh, apply settings based upon who has access to what, like accounting has access to accounting, but sales and marketing don't have access to accounting. There's other things that you can do as well, such as, let's say I um, deliver a proposal to a client. I can say, I can restrict the type of access. I can make that document view only. I can set uh, a limitation on how long that um, the document is valid. So let's say I only want to give them access to it for 48 hours. So I can say, okay, after 48 hours, they don't have access to it any longer. I can also uh, set um, restrictions that they can't download it, they can't print it, uh, they can't forward it to anybody else. And um, at any time, let's say I give them a month instead of 48 hours, I give them a month. And then something in the back of my head thinks, oh, maybe they're shopping me around. Um, I can actually go back in and rescind the access I gave them, so it immediately makes it unavailable. There's ways that you can lock documents down uh, so much that the only way they can actually take a copy of that is by pulling it up on their screen, taking out their phone, and taking a picture of it. That is something that we can't prevent, but everything pretty much up to that point, we can uh, restrict and manage, which, which makes this particular uh, service um, a great tool, especially if you're dealing with a lot of sensitive documents or intellectual property and things of that nature. How about encryption, Eddie? So, when we talk about encryption, um, it's important to understand there's there's two types of encryption. There's data at rest and data in motion. Uh, when you have information on your hard drive and it's just sitting there, that's data at rest. Ideally, that information is encrypted um, at all times, uh, and, and you have the, the appropriate keys to get into that information. So if somebody stole your laptop and they pulled out your hard drive, and without the key, they wouldn't be able to, to get into there. Now, the truth is that if they really wanted to and they spent enough time, uh, eventually they might be able to get in there if that's the reality of the situation. But when we think about security, you have to remember we want to be as much of a nuisance as possible so that they don't waste time with us and they go to somebody else that's, that's easier to get to. Um, so the other piece of this is our data in motion. And data in motion is that let's say I actually decide to attach a file and send it someplace. Um, I want to make sure that I encrypt the file before I actually attach it to the email and send it. So that sending uh, via email or other other mechanism, that's data encryption. So encryption can be done on both of those. With the EMS package that I spoke to earlier, it allows um, a lot of different levels of encryption. It also has a feature called data loss prevention, which can identify um, potential critical information such as social security numbers, or credit card numbers. If it identifies that in a message that's going out, it'll actually stop it and say, hey, this looks like a um, credit card number. Are you sure you want to send it? Um, and that all those instances get recorded. Uh, to an administrator that can look at it and can identify um, is this like a problem that we have throughout the company or is this a problem that you know maybe Eric sending them out maybe I just have a problem with Eric as opposed to having a problem with everybody but it gives you um, reporting and information that, let, that lets you help train your train your associates and, and really work on some security issues that you might be having in your company. Uh, we have a client that is uh, in, in the, the tax preparation business, and he is uh, under pressure from the IRS. IRS published some guidelines for for security and encryption of that data. And if you think about it, uh, a CPA or a tax preparer has, has quite a bit of information that is non-public. Social security numbers, for example, dates of birth. Uh, he also has, in some cases, credit card data so that he can bill his clients. And all that stuff is sitting in, a, in a, an area that is accessible, uh, and, and it shouldn't be. 
and he has uh, a mandate now from the IRS to encrypt that data while it's at rest, as you point out. And then when he sends out, uh, say, tax returns, for example, uh, via email, those, those have to be secure as well. Yeah, the, uh, there's a lot of, um, I mean, depending on what uh, industry you're in, there's uh, regulatory issues. Uh, if you work in healthcare, you have HIPAA. If you're accounting financial, you have SOX. Uh, what's nice is that this package, uh, all these services work together to help um, you stay in compliance with whatever regulatory issues that are of of concern to your industry or your particular company. So um, the Office 365 experience along with the add-ons make it easy to stay, not only stay compliant, but um, really be uh, do your due diligence and use best practices uh, in, in handling sensitive data. Eric, go ahead. Across devices. <clears throat> So, again, this is just going back to what we've talked about a couple of times now, but the ability to work on a wide range of devices from that laptop or desktop that you might have that, you know, is a giant brick that you're wedded to for a number of hours during the day, but at the end of the day or at lunch or whenever you might feel that need or when you, if you are a more mobile person, a, a salesperson, a service person, you're out uh, engaging with clients out in the field on a, on a regular basis, you have that need to be able to work on, on some other type of device, uh, a tablet device, uh, an iPad, a Microsoft Surface device. Uh, you may need the uh, ability to have access to some of the information on your iPhone or Android phone. And so the ability to work across all of those platforms, all of those different types of devices throughout your day is incredibly important in today's world. Uh, upper right-hand corner, there's this uh, mention of resyncing, and that uh, resyncing process I think is pretty valuable. So as you move from device to device, the, the applications know that things have changed. Uh, only if you have stored a, a version of that in, in the cloud someplace, either in OneDrive or in SharePoint. And then the application uh, knows that the changes have been made. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit, a few seconds, to go and resync. And then once it's resynced, then basically all the information is up to date on whatever device you're using at the time. Yeah, I mean, here's a, just a great example of that just from yesterday for me. I started an email uh, while I was out uh, at a meeting yesterday. Um, I had uh, met somebody new, started to draft an email to them uh, to thank them for the, the meeting. Uh, but didn't have all of the, the pieces and, and uh, the ease of getting all of that done at that particular moment. So I just I saved it as a draft. Uh, when I got back home, I was able to open up my email on a different device. Uh, I was able to go into my drafts folder for my email, uh, continue add in the links and the other pieces that I wanted to, and send uh, that email off. Um, that's the, the beauty of exactly that, that I have the ability to access uh, from all of those files to access uh, email information and, and do that across from any device. Yeah, you go ahead. More control and choice. Okay. So, again, this, uh, when we talk about um, uh, control and choice. Uh, one of the nice things about Office 365, uh, unlike our old traditional versions of Office that we used to purchase, is that these come with automatic updates. So whenever uh, an enhancement is made to an application, you get it automatically. That's one of the benefits and features of having a subscription is that whenever they make an improvement, uh, it's automatically uh, distributed out to those with the subscriptions. Um, What's really nice is that in a traditional environment, let's say I have a seasonal business. So coming into the holidays, I ramp up with employees, and I go from a base of 20 employees to a base of 40, and all of them need to be using uh, Office 365. Or you know, they need to be using the productivity suite. Uh, traditionally, I'd have to buy 20 more 
uh, full versions of Office so that um, those 20 people, those extra 20 people can have access and do the work that I need them to do. What's nice about the subscriptions is that I pay monthly. So all I have to do is um, get subscriptions for, let's say it's a three month period for the time I'm busy. And then I ramp up to 40 users. And as soon as the seasonal period is over, I ramp back down to my base of 20. And I've only paid for the time that I've actually used instead of having to buy a year subscription at a time. So having that flexibility and control is great. It's also nice to know that you can upgrade or downgrade your particular subscription at any time, you know, uh, it, month to month. So let's say for some reason I need access to um, a higher level of uh, subscription. I can bump it up for as long as I need to and then bump it back down to the subscription I had before. A lot of uh, ease and control with that model. And then, again, with uh, a single license, you can have up to five deployments, and you can put that across um, a number of devices that you have. So tablets, phones, uh, laptops, desktops, whatever, uh, whatever you really need or what you prefer to work on. I think one of the things that is appealing to small business especially uh, in the, the traditional methodology to put some technology together, there's an investment in hardware and software and potentially uh, network infrastructure on premise. So all of that essentially goes away. You still need a portion of it, of course, for, for network access. But uh, much of that is now pushed onto the shoulders of Microsoft so that uh, some of those things uh, don't, don't have an upfront cost like they did before, but there is a manageable monthly cost instead. Right, Brian. And uh, the other thing uh, we, I, we keep talking about uh, what you can do and, you know, you can go and change these subscriptions, you can add, you can delete. And, you know, some people listening might be thinking that, oh, that's, that sounds like a pain or it's very technical. It's actually from the, the admin dashboard in Office 365. It's really simple. You can do most of these tasks in, uh, you know, one to two minutes. Uh, five minutes being for something that, you know, a little more detailed. But even, uh, even a very basic user, somebody who doesn't consider themselves to be very technologically savvy, um, uh, can really do this. And there's a lot of uh, documentation to help you to walk you through it. And of course, if that's just not your cup of tea at all. You can always find a trust advisor to um, to manage and administer your accounts for you. Eric, go ahead. Work from anywhere. <laughs> well, this just goes right back to the same things we've kind of hit on a number of times now. That ability to work in any uh, any place, any particular location. Uh, have the same standard tools that you're using, that you're used to doing. So from a, an efficiency standpoint, I'm not having to go from one set of tools to a different set of tools when I move from one device, when I move from one location. Uh, it really doesn't matter where I am. As Eddie pointed out earlier, you can be in Southern California today, you can be in Europe tomorrow, you can have access to all of the same files that you had access to when you were sitting here in Southern California while you're traveling and, and cruising around uh, Europe and be able to uh, continue to communicate with the team members that you uh, are working with. Yeah, and I think something to really focus on here is look at that picture. Look at how happy these guys are. They're happy because they're not in the office. You don't get those kind of smiles <laughs> sitting in a cubicle. Right, so these guys are happy to be out and about using their own devices and I mean the girl on the left, uh, she's like, you don't even have to pay her, she's so happy. But all joking aside, um, it really it lends itself to uh, a more collaborative environment, a more easy going environment. And think about the workforce going forward. Um, that picture is uh, illustrative of who you're going to be hiring moving forward, millennials and consult so and so forth. And you have to understand what makes them comfortable and when, when, how, and in what environments they are most productive. So I think uh, moving to a more collaborative environment, a work from anywhere environment, uh, you know, that's part of the, the idea of modern business. 
And I'm, I'm guilty as charged. So prior to our presentation last night, Eric, I was uh, working away on my notebook computer with uh, internet access. And I was basically just comfortable working in the mall as, as working at, at home. Also, I noticed as I walk into the Starbucks from place to place, there are quite a number of people uh, diligently working on their notebook computers on the, the Starbucks Wi-Fi. Absolutely. Okay, I think this is our, our last slide. So Eric, one more time, collaborate seamlessly. Well, again, this is the, the running theme, but exactly this, the ability to collaborate as we've talked about repeatedly throughout the day. Uh, I started off with you know a, a format of this presentation with a ton of slides to it. I uh, shared it over to you guys. You were able to go in, edit it down, uh, bring our uh, what was previously a two-hour presentation down to a one-hour presentation uh, and make it work in a, a format that worked for all of us. So you know, I think that this is a, a great example of exactly what we see in business today, the fact that you know, somebody may originate with some part of a, a project, some piece of a file, um, but at the end of the day, a bunch of folks need to be involved in that process and have the ability for everybody to work together uh, around that document, whatever that might be, whether that's a Microsoft Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, a PowerPoint presentation, a video, um, whatever those things are. The whole point is that uh, everybody can have access to that, and that access is based on uh, secure uh, access to the uh, information so that we can define who has access to it and only give those people access, but that at the end of the day, we can all share this and we can do so across a, a wide range of devices as we're seeing represented here in, in this particular image. That's the beauty of the, the solutions. That's the beauty of the tools. And this is the area that Microsoft is pushing more and more in. The collaborative element, they recognize that we do work in a team-based environment today for most people in business, and that people at the same time need to be able to work mobile, they need to be able to work uh, across devices and in a wide range of settings and scenarios. Right, and especially if you're in sales, you know, the ABCs of sales always be closing. So let's say you have your sales force out there and they're, they're going to get a contract signed, but when they get to the client, the client wants to make some modifications. Well, traditionally, you have to go back to the office, make those mods, and then come back. So it's it delays the closing process for X amount of time. Now, you can make a phone call, have somebody make the changes to the contract, add or delete items as necessary, and you can still deliver that contract while you're in the office and having the discussion so you don't lose any time at all. And I think that scenario is very impactful. Uh, we've kind of talked about uh, some smaller projects, smaller documents. Uh, I think that uh, the value is becomes more apparent as the the project becomes a little larger. So, for example, if you have a largest software development project, for example, all the files that pertain to the, the tasks that that remain to be completed, uh, the overall plan, uh, things that pertain to the requirements definition of you can even get the the elements of source code or some of the outputs from the reports uh, into a common area, so you don't lose track of these things. So in a, a larger project, the, the value becomes uh, much more apparent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll touch on that. But you know, many of us work in, in project-based uh, organizations, especially in professional services organizations today. Whether you're a public relations firm, whether you're a some type of a, uh, a marketing or a website development organization, at the end of the day, these things tend to be project-oriented. And so there are steps that have to be gone through in those. There are collaborations that are occurring constantly throughout that process. Um, and beauty of, of that is that there are solutions like SharePoint that we've talked about today, OneDrive, uh, the new Microsoft Teams functionality, which uh, is about to be released uh, and is designed for uh, very much those types of uh, environments. Uh, these are all solutions that are uh, available through the, the Microsoft Office 365 licensing and give organizations that fit into that, uh, that structure a, a lot of capabilities that they may not uh, be able to uh, take advantage of or may not have been able to take advantage of 
in the past. You know, many of the things we've talked about today were once upon a time uh, things that were sort of the, the purview of the, the Fortune 500 types of, of companies. And now we see that these capabilities are available for small businesses uh, all over the world, um, even down to the single user uh, license. And so even though you may be a one-person business, my guess is that you probably work collaboratively with a lot of other businesses in that scenario. As I pointed out, you know, the public relations person who is a, a subcontract uh, public relations uh, person for uh, many, many businesses uh, still has the same needs of being able to collaborate with their clients, uh, the ability to share files. Uh, in fact, it becomes even more imperative when uh, you are in that type of a business. So these tools are fantastic for exactly those types of businesses to get started with and really help them and grow their organization. Okay, we have a few more minutes left, and let's go and try a, a short panel discussion. Uh, on the screen here, there is a URL for a survey, so all of the folks that are watching, uh, would you please go here and provide some feedback uh, about this presentation? So let's try a, a few questions, we have a few minutes. So Eddie, uh, one of the things that strikes me about Office 365 is that not, not only does it have uh, e email functionality, but it has the other functionality of Office as well. So are there points of integration be between Office and the, the other uh, uh, email and the other, other Office products? Oh yeah, there's, uh, there's all kinds of integration. Um, one of the newest releases is that, let's say I have been working on a file, uh, an Excel file, uh, and I'm also, I also have Outlook open. Uh, when I go to, let's say, you know, if I want to capture a screenshot from that file, um, can I uh, go to Outlook and I, I try and, instead of going to a file directory, uh, Office 365 knows where I was last and is kind of assumed that I'm kind of working with current information. So it always go and, and try and access that most recent file which is great. It's a time saver. You know, might not think about it, but we're talking about seconds and, you know, a minute, 30 to 60 seconds worth of time. But you add up the number of times that you do that for your day, and it really makes a difference. Um, so there's a lot of little integrations like that. There's a lot of um, third-party integrations. Um, there is, I can't remember the... Uh, there's, I believe there's a Starbucks app that integrates into, it's either Outlook or Excel. You can actually order online or find the closest Starbucks for you. You can send your order in. Not that that's what you should be mostly concerned with, but um, there's a lot of, a lot of little tools and functionality that um, have really been incorporated into the, into the product. Great. So Eric, uh, for, for a small business, if you could choose three features of Office 365 to start with first, what would you choose? I would start with Exchange Online, as we talked about in the uh, little bit ago. Get away from using that, you know, my, my email is uh, Eric Klaus 34567 at, you know, Hotmail, at Yahoo, at Cox.com, at AOL. Uh, I still see people who do that, and it fascinates me because this is so simple to represent yourself so much more professionally uh, by moving to the Exchange Online uh, starter point. And it's literally a couple of dollars uh, to do that. It is uh, just one of those silly things that I, I see people do. The, the next thing is moving the document storage uh, off of the hard drive of that laptop device or, or tablet device or whatever it is that you're working on today, desktop device. Uh, and begin storing those files out to the, the cloud and having that access to that information um, anywhere. You know, having a uh, terabyte of storage in your OneDrive for business, that's a ton of storage. You can save a lot of files out there with one terabyte. Uh, you can save a lot of pictures, you can save a lot of videos, you can save a lot of everything with one terabyte of storage. And now that information is accessible anywhere you've got a, a Wi-Fi connection, uh, pretty much anywhere today. So 
those are the, the first couple of things that I look at. For a, a third one, the, the next piece I guess that I would extend from there is probably uh, going over to uh, Skype for Business, uh, having that ability to communicate with people, having that ability to just quickly chat with people. You know, sometimes all I want to do is send an instant message to someone and say, hey, are you available right now? Um, and they can, you know, discreetly uh, reply back. Um, it's an um, efficient way of connecting with folks. Uh, and then if I want to at that point, I can turn that into a Skype for business call. Uh, I can share document files with them through that session. There's a lot that can be done that way. Terrific. Okay, our last question. Uh, what, what has your experience been with OneNote? Um, I find it to be um, one of the things I've noticed is that uh, it's one of the most popular apps out there right now. I would say over 95% of people who are exposed to it for the first time, uh, it ends up being their most favorite and most widely used application. It's, uh, it's a uh, I like to think of it as like kind of like a three-ring binder where you can have different tabs. You can do lots of different things. You can uh, take snapshots or snippets of um, you know uh, your internet searches. You can save. It's just kind of a cut and paste. It, it's almost it's almost like having a, a notepad but better, um, especially with some of the tablets that you can actually hand write on your tablets and make little notes things, um, save things as messages or reminders for later. Uh, it, and it's very collaborative. It, it extends the, uh, the already highly collaborative tools such as OneDrive and SharePoint. It's just on a whole other level. And I think um, if you think of having a, a three-ring binder for each a project or each group that you work with, let's say, let's say you're, uh, you know, you have a business, but you also um, have a club that you belong to, you have a workbook for that club and all the activities and things that you do with that, uh, and then the PTA, but also all the different different kinds of projects that you're working on, um, you know, within your company. So I think, um, again, it's just a, another collaboration tool. It's very easy to use, and uh, it's, it's really dynamic. I think overall, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those it's kind of one of those things that um, you never thought you needed it until you got it, and now you can't live without it kind of thing. So I like to start with. OK, looks like we have uh, come to our, our conclusion. And I just wanted to, to say thank you to you both, uh, Eric Klaus, Eddie Bader. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate the opportunity, and uh, was really uh, appreciative of uh, everybody taking the time. Eddie, always great to work with you again. Fantastic uh, to uh, continue this series, hopefully, in the future. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thanks, Eric. Uh, really enjoy working with you guys. So hopefully we'll do some more. Very good. And uh, th thank you also to the, the South Bay Chambers of Commerce. And uh, everybody, have a great day.